this morning for a demonstration of global hydropower on a uh, light plane. Probably no need to do a big introduction on Elaine. Everyone's met Elaine now, and um, uh, certainly uh, well aware of um, Elaine's passion and standing within GHP. So what I'd like to do is uh, just hand straight over to Elaine uh, uh, to take the next step and uh, to uh, introduce to you our, uh, our pilot um, and uh, talk briefly about what's going on this morning. Thank you, Trevor. Good morning, everybody. I'd like to firstly dedicate Global Ocean. We believe that Ross's memory will be with us. Ladies and gentlemen, Global Hydropower Aviation. Yes, one of the major steps for Global Hydropower beyond automotive power generators, locomotive, marine. This morning we're going to review Global Hydro Car Aviation in a carburetor engine and also an EFI engine. What we'd like to do is walk you through the Global Hydro Power componentry as applicable to Global Hydro Power Aviation. Drawing your attention firstly to the fact that Global Hydro Power for all internal combustion engines uses the same mechanical methodology.
is a very, very safe gas. Perhaps one of the safest gases because of its nature to rise. In comparison to other fuels that like to lay low, they are the fuels that we need to be very careful. Global hydropower aviation utilising the standard technological system of global So uh, I think that uh, the applications here are widely 
vary and the ability to us in our business where we are constantly landing to reload, to take on more liquid, to go out and do a job. Quite often we're restricted by the length of the airstrip we're using and often we'll only take half tanks of fuel because we want to, we want to maximise our capacity. So often every two hours we've got to pull up and refuel rather than going for that four hours before we refuel. But if we could just put a gas bottle in the, in the aeroplane, half full our tank, we can go around there for like 30, 40% longer than we want to do. We can be more productive. And when we're carrying less fuel, we're using less fuel because we're not using as much energy to get some fuel. So, you know, the, the flow on effects of this are enormous. Uh, I'm really excited to be a part of it and a uh, part of uh, getting the whole uh, process through and getting, getting it legalised. And uh, I think that uh, it's going to be a long road, but it's, it's just everything about it is simple. And, uh, and I think. Uh, the, you know, the authorities will see that. When you talk hydrogen, most people go, shivers, that's dangerous. But actually it's not. To think that you're carrying uh, 240 litres of ab gas, which is dangerous, in the wings of an aircraft, compared to uh, uh, 1,200 litres of hydrogen that's sitting in the back of an aircraft, that in its, in its natural state isn't a very flammable liquid. Uh, to think that you could get an angle grinder and cut through that bottle now with all the sparks and everything else, it's not going to be a That's amazing. So uh, I think we've just got to get that. We've got to be able to sell that mindset to the authorities and uh, sell this concept and get the appropriate test right and done. And I think it's, it, it's, it's, we've got no choice but to see it take off. And uh, yeah, I just, I just uh, really take my hat off to everyone who's been involved in this business and have really hung in for as long as they have because I know it's been a tough road and uh, excited to be a part of it and looking forward. Uh, and I'd like you to hit me with some questions because that's probably going to be the easiest way to uh, answer what's, what's going through your heads out there. What, what's the flying now? So often I've been out, I've been out on the job. There's exactly that. The fire front going towards the house. You just know you need to get back there with a load before that burns. And you look down, you haven't got enough fuel. You've got to go back and refuel and just let it burn. I mean, it's critical. It's everything is about fuel. How long you can stay in the air? How much? How much payload you can take? And uh, how much money we can save? Because at the end of the day, we do want to make a dollar. And if we can go and start reducing fuel costs, and become very how many lives we can save, yeah. Can you install the tanks horizontally or they have to be upright? No, they can be horizontal, upright. It's, it's, it's no issue. Yeah, it has to be important. Well, one of the challenges we are faced with is the fact that we'd really like to, to mount this tank into a luggage compartment. It's, it's in the cabin and a cabin area, so there's going to be, you know, we're going to probably have to encase it and then, you know, overcome all the restrictions there and all the potential hazards gas bottle leaking in the cabin or anything like that. So yeah. have you looked at the like having your passengers on board is a requirement to let them know what's actually fueling the um, airplane? You, you've got that fear factor of having hydrogen in the fighter. Well I would imagine that you've got to be pretty open, yeah. open about it, yeah. But just having our gas on board is dangerous. Yeah, I'll probably say that. Yeah. That's what the thing is that they're having gas bottle. Yeah. It's it's a it's a it's a flying explosive object anyway, you know, so uh, I don't think we can add to that anymore. I've got a question that comes up quite regularly. With the RPM, it's a constant. 
Yeah, it's pretty constant. We take off with maximum RPM, and an aircraft like this is probably about 26, 2700 RPM, and then we'll throttle it back to about 24, 2500 RPM. Which is not unusual for the generators. They, they idle at those. And once you, when you get in the air and you are cruising, you know, that's, that's very constant. You know, it's a constant 23, 2400 RPM. It depends how much fuel you want to burn. Yeah. Would you be using this during the takeoff or just while the cruising Oh, look, you'd use it for takeoff, you'd use it for cruising. What fuel is burned for the takeoff? I'm sure for the first takeoff, I'll probably take off on the tanks and turn it on up there, you know, you've got a real bit of confidence, but yeah, I, I, I just can't see it. So once again, once it cuts out, it's back to ordinary. Once it cuts out, it's back to ordinary. So if you were lower hydrogen, obviously you're not going to take off because there could be that surge and take off. And that's a, a bit of an unknown for me, but that's all the stuff that we go through with the flight testing. Okay. Yeah. So there's really no uh, danger with having it on board. Well, it, it's it's uh, it's probably not for me to answer that, but from my understanding, yeah, there's very little danger, very little impact of having it on board as long as it's secured and uh, you know you've got the, the venting system that was just spoken about. And, uh, I, I, I can't personally, I can't see it, but I'm a really practical person. I just look at things and go, yeah, that would that would work. But then there's there's the unforeseen and the questions and the hoops that we've got to jump through to actually get uh, get the authorities on board to accept that you know this is a safe practice. It's, it's really no different to all remote. We've got the hydrogen when you're driving, we've got the hydrogen when you're it's driving. It's, it's really no difference in any other. The only thing I'd say to that is probably safer. You've got a hydrogen bomb in the boot of your car, and so you run, you know, someone runs into the boot of your car, you know, you've got a fair risk there. And this is not really going to happen to you. An engine failure or a pilot error or whatever. So, you know, going to a crash site, there's going to be more issues to deal with. Than as long as that hydrogen bottle is not flying around in the cockpit, uh, I don't see it as any really big issue. Peter, can you see a benefit for passenger planes as well? Like, like the Qantas profits tend to work on the price of the fuel at the yeah. moment. Um, yeah, Out outrageous benefits. Yeah. And uh, I, I, that's, that's the ultimate, that's where I'd love to see it go. Uh, gas turbine aircraft, uh, yeah, massive. You know, when, you, when you consider, like, these are using 60 litres an hour. The aircraft I'm flying are using sort of 300 to 350 litres an hour. So just sitting on the ground, we're burning 80 litres an hour. You know, that's over a litre a minute while we're waiting to be reloaded. And if we can cut that by a third, or 40%, it's massive. Any other questions? Inside this cabin, the doors are all closed. You're at 10,000 feet. 
and the venting system slides off the bed outside with the cabin filled with 1200 litres of hydrogen. How would that affect us? How would that affect their health? Hydrogen, by nature, we breathe it in. It's in the atmosphere we breathe, it's in the water we drink, it's in the margarine that we eat, it's in the medication we taste and we take. Hydrogen, if it was to be vented inside of the cabin, we can breathe it in, it will not asphyxiate us, it will not affect us in any way. But hydrogen will not stay within the cabin, it will look for any area to be released. Hydrogen to be contained must be in a sealed environment at all times. It's so light, it's such a small molecule, it will escape. Okay, and how would that be in an environment where we have got a sealed cockpit, where we've got a pressurised cockpit, we're using oxygen to, uh, to, you know, to help us breathe and say 15,000 feet? Sure. It will dissipate into the atmosphere. It will expel itself into the atmosphere and become part of the natural atmosphere. So we're not going to be sitting up there like laughing gas or anything like that. Unfortunately, no. Okay, let's start. Uh,